Hear the word of the Lord. In Luke chapter 19, verse 24 to 26, he said to the bystanders, Take the mina away from him and give it to him who has the ten minas. And they said to him, Lord, he has ten minas already. And Jesus said, I tell you, that everyone who gets and has, more will be given. But from the man who does not get and does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And the Lord began to speak to me and said, the move of the Spirit has come to you in the number 10. I said, Lord, what is 10? 10 is a number, oh glory to God. 10 is a number of God's authority over mankind divine completion. It is a number of divine perfection of God's authority. In other words, 10 is the introduction. 10 is the introduction of God's supreme authority and power. That's the number 10. So you, you realize that, you know, when, when you put 6 and 4 together, you have 10. And there's so much you know, uh, biblical numerology. God is a God of numbers. That's why you have the book of numbers. Glory to God. And he began to speak to me. And he said, it's been, it's been 10 years plus, And you've been waiting to hear something about what I'm telling you. But 10 is that number of perfection. When authority, when uh, power, when glory, when that which concerns God and man working together is perfected. And you can go and, and look into it. I know you'll be blessed. And then he began to speak to me and says, because it's a number of perfection, I am going to combine, I am going to combine anointings. He says, Jesus expounded to them beginning at Moses. All the things written about him in the law and the prophets. So Moses was the first major prophetic gate. Major prophetic gate that speaks to the church and speaks to the person of Jesus. And so uh, on, the, on the Mount of Transfiguration in Matthew chapter 17, you see Moses appearing. And the thing about Moses is that God made a covenant personally with Moses. So God says, I'm going to introduce now permanently this anointing in your midst. And what is it? And the Lord said, Behold, I lay down afresh the terms of a mutual agreement between Israel and me, a covenant before all your people, and I will do marvels, wonders, miracles, such as have not been wrought or created in all the earth or in any nation. And all the people among whom you are shall see the work of the Lord, for it is a, f a thing of all that I will do with you. It is a thing of all that I will do with you. Exodus 34.10 And then he said, not only will I do that, because I'm combining, it has to be perfection. Moses and Elijah came to Jesus. Moses is the beginning. Elijah is the end because he announced the coming of Jesus in John. Glory to God. He announced the coming of Jesus in John. And the Bible says, in Luke chapter 1, verse 16 to 17, the Bible says, And he will turn back and cause to return many of the sons of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will go before him in the spirit of Elijah and turn back the hearts of the fathers to the children, disobedient and incredulous and unpersuadable to the wisdom of the just, of the upright, in order to make ready a people for God. So one, you see signs and wonders. Two, you see revival. And three, not only do you see that, because he says I'm combining, he, you, he has to combine it to something. He has to combine it to something. When Jesus did the miracle, 
For example, when Jesus did the miracle of turning water into wine, he had to combine um, hydrogen and oxygen to carbon. So before you just had water, you had uh, H2O. That was it. And then what he did is that he added carbon, C6. And then it became wine, C6, H12, O6. He had to combine it to something. So he says, I'm going to combine these two to what already you had by the Spirit. And you and I have already been flowing in this anointing. Look for uh, 18 to 19. The Bible says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Glory to God. If you're poor here, I'm telling you, you cannot be in this place one month and even less than one month and still remain poor. There is an anointing to preach the gospel to you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And he sent me to announce, to release, of course, also poor in spirit. And he sent me to announce, to release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. He sent forth as delivered those who are oppressed, downtrodden, bruised, crushed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So you have miracle signs and wonders. And then you have revival that is coming as a result of John. And then you have the anointing of Jesus. So what God is doing, he said, I'm going to combine. I'm going to combine. And then you have Acts 1.8, where the Bible says, the power of God is coming upon you, and the anointing you have is the anointing to be a witness. So one, you have the anointing to open the prophetic gate. Two, you have the anointing to cause people to rush into the gate. Three, you have the anointing to witness about that which caused him to raise from the dead. And four, you have the anointing of power and prosperity and deliverance. And the Holy Spirit was telling me, it is time for you to receive that which is greater. Because he says, take away the one and give it to the one who has ten. And he said, you've developed ten. You've been serving God. You've been working with God for, for ten years now. More than ten. But ten is that number of perfection. You've perfected your work. You've done something. You've moved in the spirit with God. You've, you've stood you did something with yourself. And now God is saying, I'm going to add one meaning. And what that one represents is something tremendous. It is something tremendous. What that one represents is something tremendous. It's not, it's not, um, it's not something small. The double one, the double one is the double light. Remember, this is the year of the shining light. First day, let there be light. It's the year of the double light. It's the year of the blinding light. So we come, because 1 plus 10 is 11, right? So we come to that place where the glory of God has been perfected in his children, and the glory of God has been perfected in our midst. And he said, this is the day, and I'm, I'm telling you, this is the day where you're going to begin to see ministers preaching the gospel, like you see now. And they just begin to, to get transfigured before you. And it is not a gimmick because it will also be happening on, on your screen. Glory to God. And this is the day when you're going to take on a form of glory that is blinding to the enemy. Blinding to the enemy. One of the reasons why demons are, can easily function around Christians is because they can see. The light is good enough for them to see. But God is saying, I'm shifting you to that place where it blinds the enemy, where he cannot see. So there is that verse in Job chapter 28. Um, thank you, Lord Jesus. There is that verse in Job chapter 28. Are you, are you together with me? Yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Job chapter 28, I believe, verse 9. Glory to God. So it says, there is that path. There is that path. Which no bird 
of prey knows. He doesn't know it. There is that path. What is that path? He creates new paths. When you read in Isaiah, where God says, let the crooked ways be made straight. When God creates a path, he does not create a path that has already been. Remember, Jesus is already the way. That one will not be changed. But the paths in him are always new. So he's combining the spirit of God that was upon Moses, a spirit of wisdom and a spirit of signs and wonders. And he's combining the spirit of God that was upon Elijah, a spirit of revival. Huh? And the spirit of the prophet that announces the verdict of God on nations. And then he's combining the anointing of a witness which he gave to you. That is your office. Like Moses was a deliverer, Elijah was a revivalist, you are a witness. That's your office. And then he's also putting in there the office and the anointing of Jesus. Because that's where he's our great apostle. He's our great apostle. Now considering our great apostle Jesus Christ, who has gone into the heavens. He's our great apostle. It's an anointing of deliverance. It's an anointing of power. It's an anointing of fire. It's an anointing of the moving of the spirit. When you combine all these things, what happens is that God is creating a new path. Has never been there before. So the Bible says in Job, there is a path which no fowl knows. No fowl knows. It has not discovered it. It has not discovered it. And it says the falcon's eye, these are demons, these are high-ranking, high-flying demons, like, like divination, like sorcery, has not found it. Glory to God. And the proud beasts or the young lions uh, have not trodden it, nor has the fierce lion. Not even the devil knows about this because it's brand new. And he, 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 you're going to go with this for a time. And by the time the enemy figures out what it is, you'll be rising, you'll be hearing another word like we've had right now. I don't know how long this is going to be, but I'm going to tell you something. I feel in my spirit that the gates of the nations have opened. I feel in my spirit that there are people, even the ones that are coming to the 40 days, that are even going to begin to travel nations. More people are going to begin to travel nations. Some are going to receive a call of God for nations. I feel because that is, that is the anointing that blasts open the gates. That is the anointing that blasts open the gates. Thank you for your love and enthusiasm. Amen. Glory to God. And I've been, I've been asking God, I've been asking God. He's been telling me, I'm telling you, I've been praying to God. I said, God, you need to open the gates. You need to open the gates. And he spoke to me a word. And I know that it is your time to walk into gates. It is your time. The one mina is the Lord. Oh my God. He says, take the one and give it to the one who has ten. The one mina is the Lord because it came by his command. It is the Lord himself. It came by his command. It came by his command. And I'm telling you, God is adding himself to whatever it is you've been doing for 10 years. I don't know what the number 10 means for you, but you've walked in something. You've perfected something. You've perfected obedience. You've perfected faith. You've perfected prayer. You've done something. You've been somewhere. You've seen something. Glory to God. And now God is saying, I am that one. I am that element of the spirit that is being added to your 10. And it is going to become number 11. And number 11 means the double glory, the blinding light. Oh, precious Lord Jesus. What God is trying to tell you is that in a moment of time, your circumstance has shifted. And now I expect a new anointing. I expect a new move of the Spirit. I expect to trust God to see where I was going to see, um, <laughs> oh Jesus, where I was going to see something less, I'm going to see something greater. I'm going to see a double move of the Spirit. But not only that, you realize this. You realize this. When God opens the gates, he 
He sends us through them. Right? When God opens the gates, he sends us through them. We become apostles of some sort. And I believe that everyone that is sent ought to operate in the anointing of one that is sent. Because apostolos, right here in Greece, just next to us, it's a word that is commonly used. It's not a new word. You use it to send. You can call a child an apostle when you send him to buy bread. It's not, it's not, it's, but in the kingdom, it means something. You're sent of God. A divine engine is going to be put in you, and you're going to be sent out. You're going to be sent out to stand for something, to do something. A lot of you have the call of God, but you've not seen it materialize as it should have. God is saying, I'm going to use this season to send you out. So you have all that. You have all those things we've talked about. There are four things. And now you have John 3.34. He whom God has sent, he gives not by uh, the spirit of measure unto him. He, he gives not the spirit by measure unto him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He gives not the spirit by measure unto him. So now we've picked up speed. We've picked up unusual speed. And you're going to see something Tremendous. It is as though you're not going to have any limit to the anointing, to your faith, to the miracles. There is not going to be a cap on what you're able to experience supernaturally and through the word of God that works with you. And when the Lord spoke this to me, I became so happy. I became so happy. I said, God, you, you, you've changed the season so instantly. We almost didn't have time to prepare he says, you don't need to prepare. You just need to obey. You just need to obey. When it was time for the Israelites to move, they did not prepare. He told them, pack up and leave. Pack up and leave. It's time to go now. Now faith is. Now the Spirit is saying, it's time to leave. It's time to go to the next level. You're going to pick up an anointing. You're going to pick up a speed. You're going to pick up a dimension. The crooked path in the Spirit has been made straight. In other words, a new path has been created to you in the ways of the Lord. One of a higher dimension, one of a higher glory, one of, of, of a higher authority. And you're going to begin to see everything respond to the gate of the Spirit that has been opened to you. Your finances, your work with God, your health, your relationships, and everything around you. Your intimacy with God, your assignment on earth. There are people who are going to discover exactly what God sent them here to do. You're going to rise out of obscurity. This anointing is the anointing that brings you out of obscurity. Because it says, Arise, shine, let your light come. And then the Bible says in Isaiah 60, it says, And kings will come to the brightness of your rising. You're going to have a bright rising. No one can bewitch this. No one can curse this. No witch, no warlock, no incantation can put shade on this. Throw shade on this. Glory to God. You're rising. You're rising. And so I told you that when we come into such meetings, it's not just for you, it's also for me. And by obedience, we come in to figure out what it is God is saying, what it is God is doing, what it is the Spirit of the Lord is leading us into. And now the season has changed. God has switched the speed. He has switched the season. It has changed. We're into gates now. Get ready, child of God. So I came to give you the word of the Lord. And I came to tell you, I did not know why he told me 40 days. He told me, you just go and begin to minister. And while you do it, pray and fast. I'm going to open the heavens. I'm going to do signs and wonders. But I'm also going to move in a certain way. I don't know what you've been waiting on God for, for a long time. There are certain, there are certain conditions that do not answer to anything except God brings a superior anointing, a superior move of the Spirit, a superior authority. God comes in heavy-handedly, and that's what he's doing in your life. In the name of Jesus. And I want to challenge you now to release your faith. I want to challenge you now 
to go back to God and tell the Holy Spirit, I'm ready more than ever to work with you. It's time for you to pray some, some dangerous prayers. The Holy Spirit, do whatever it takes and get whatever you do not like out of my life and let me work with you. Because the wind of the Spirit moves, but it reaches a certain time and it loses its strength and God sends another wind. You do not want, you do not want to miss what God is doing. You don't want to miss what God is doing. And then he opened my mind, he opened my eyes, he opened the eyes of my spirit. And he says, you do not know, you're going to come from here to meeting presidents. Today we're moving by the prime minister's office and my wife turned to me and, and I could tell the spirit of God had put it in her spirit and she prophesied to me and said, we are going to meet the prime minister. But now it makes sense because the wind has changed and and and. The young lions can now prophesy. You see, your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. It's the anointing of John. It's the anointing of Elijah. You're going to, I'm telling you, you're going to come from these meetings and go and begin to meet significant people. You're going to come from these meetings and your identity is going to change. You're going to realize you are meant for a much higher place than where you're operating. You're going, people are, be, are going to begin to tell you, but you, we've always been seeing this in you, and we, did not, we just did not know how to tell you. But we always thought that is where you are supposed to be, not here among us. Some of you, God is going to tell you, we always knew that you are a deliverer. I'm telling you, people are going to tell you, we always knew it was you who God sent to deliver us. We just didn't know how to tell you this. At the workplace, people are going to tell you, I, I do not know, but I always felt it. But now I realize it was you who was meant for this position. And things are going to begin to move like that. Why? Because you've picked up strength in the spirit. Not just speed, strength. You've picked, you're stronger. Remember that the anointing came on Isaac and the Philistines told him, you've become too strong for us. You become too strong for when you become too strong for men and for the spirits of men and women around you, they give way. They give way. Even demons know it. When you're too strong, they give way. Without any confrontation, like Jesus, they come out. You've not said anything, you just appeared, you're too strong, they come out. Glory to God. So there is a veil that is being torn off you. I love what the sister said. She said, uh, 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 she said she felt like as if something had been torn off her when the fire of God came on her. There's a veil, and now people are going to see you in a new light. The days of people looking down on you, underestimating you, counting you in a certain category are over because you've picked up a garment in the Spirit. You've picked up a path in the Spirit. God has opened your eyes to realize where the path is, how it looks like, and now we're going to learn how to walk in it. How to walk in it. Because remember the Bible says you'll hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. This is the way. Walk ye in it. Glory to God. Ancient paths and ancient oils are being released to us because ancient gates are open. I did not know. I was preparing myself. I mean, I was, I was, I was, I was puckered up and I was preparing myself to continue to preach about everlasting doors. And God said, I don't move at your level. I have a quick work. I'll cut it short in righteousness. So I'm telling you, I told my wife something the other day. I came from prayer and I told my wife something. And I was saying it and it shook me. It shook me. He said, Paul said, and this is what I feel in my spirit. And I did not know that God was moving. Now I realize it was him. He said, Paul said, God has sent me for the obedience of the faith of the nations. And then I told her, God is working with my faith for nations, my obedience, for nations, my surrender, for nations, my sight, for nations. Everything that God is doing with me is no longer for me. And it is, it's for nations. The, the, the office is being stretched to cover nations and, and peoples. And I can sense that God is stretching everything 
to cover nations. To cover nations. It's now about nations. God is going to call you to cover nations. I'm telling you, literally, nations. The difference between your yesterday and today is what God by his spirit adds to your ten. You had ten minas. He says, take the one and add it to him. Glory to God. And people are going to complain because there they complain. In that book, they complain. They said, but Lord, he has, he has, <laughs> oh Jesus. It's not going to be fair. It is going to be of God. It's not going to be fair. It's going to be of God. It's not going to be fair. It's going to come, it's going to look like you came out of nowhere. You came out of nowhere and now you're handling millions of dollars. You came out of nowhere and now you're a voice that is greater and louder than the voices that were there. You came out of nowhere and you have the resources to do things that the people that were there were looking for. You have to know when it's time to grab on to the Holy Ghost. And this is the time. People have been waiting to get married. You came out of nowhere. You had the best wedding. You, 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 I mean, and then all of a sudden, the family began. God is doing something. God is, God is moving. God is moving. God is moving. You need to know. Now, you, you need to speak it. You need to speak it. You need to agree with God. You need to agree with God. All of a sudden, things are working, and they are working with speed. Things are working. You've picked up speed. You've picked up speed. You've picked up strength. You've picked up possibilities. Why? The Holy Ghost is working. A gate has been opened. Now, you cannot, you cannot, when, when you come prophetically, you cannot downplay this message by saying, now sow into this. No, I cannot say that. I cannot say that. I cannot say that, now sow into this. No, I cannot say that. You know, because I, the, the message of God has to be undiluted. It has to be undiluted. God is not talking to you about your finances. God is talking to you about everything that pertains you. It has nothing to do with your finances. Only. Glory to God. So you come into a moment where your spirit has to catch something in order to respond. Your spirit has to catch something in order to respond. God wants you to first understand before you can move on. Before you can move on. He wants you to understand. And now that, that, that's, how you, that's how you see the prophetic coming up. The prophetic is when the mind of God is made clear. The prophetic is when the mind of God, the thoughts of God have been made sharp. And you can tell which direction for sure. You see, that happened with Saul. And they said, is Saul also among the prophets? Because he had tapped into that sharp frequency. And he was declaring the things of God as though he had them. As though he had them. And this is what is going to happen to you now. You're going to begin to, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. God is going to make your mouth a weapon. He's going to give you a wisdom and an understanding that everyone around you is going to be amazed. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. You are failing in business. You're going to write books about business. You're going to, I'm telling you, you're going to go from where you are to Harvard. You're going to the nations. As for me, I'm here to tell you. I stand here as one son of God. And I'm telling you, this gate is for nations. You're going to find yourself in different nations. That place is too small to hold you. Wherever you are, whatever you are, however far you've come in life, it is too small to hold you. You never thought that the Holy Spirit had accurate plans for you. You never thought that the, the business of the realm of the Spirit was so detailed, it was so serious that God is not interested in raising nobodies. God is interested in raising kings and priests and changers, agents of change. God, God uses or takes nobodies and turns them into great somebodies. 
So you are not going to be like your parents were. That's for sure. Could we turn that off? You're not going to be like your parents were. You're not going to be like your neighbors were. You're not going to, you're not going to look like anything else except that you're going to look like the move of the Spirit. Yeah. When someone sees you, they're going to realize you carry the anointing who are looking for. Now hear me and hear me well. Let the word of God that you've heard well up in your spirit. Sit with it. Ponder it. Sit with it. I'm telling you, listen. You know that God is speaking to you because God confirms certain things before he speaks. We were coming into, it was day two or day three, I don't know when it was. It was, I think, day two or day three. We declared that the heavens were open and God did a great financial miracle for us. That, that it's, God is showing you, it's about strength. The lady got healed of her back. You know you cannot carry anything heavy if you have problems with your back. The, the miracles are also signs. He allows certain miracles because they are also signs. And you have to be sensitive to see what God is saying. So he builds credibility before he sends his word. And that's how he has always been. So these, these past few days, we've, we've had enough signs to indicate to us that the next thing God has said should be believed at once. The next thing God has said is going to be incredible, but we should stretch our faith to believe it and receive it in the name of Jesus. And this is what he has said. You that had the ten, it could have been ten years. You might have served God for some time. You might have believed God. You might even have tithed and given and done all these things and nothing has happened for a long time. You've believed God. You've prayed. You've been in fellowships on prayer mountains, under trees, under caves, under tapulin tents. You've been everywhere as it is, you know, <laughs> with the child of God. And uh, now the word of the Lord has come to you. The word of the Lord has come to you. Out of nowhere, you're going to build your house. Out of nowhere, you're going to have what you call generational wealth given to you. Out of nowhere, out of nowhere. But is it out of nowhere? No. The move of the Spirit has changed. The move of the Spirit has come on you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And that is the word of the Lord. I end by saying, you know, I, I close that message by telling you, by telling you that it is going to be as though there is no measure, there is no limit, there is nothing your God cannot do. And when they look at the person God is using, the two do not look the same. Until God builds your identity in it, flow in it. So what I'm challenging you to do is, there are certain thoughts that the Holy Ghost is going to begin to speak to you. Change of levels. You've never thought this way. You're going to have a dream. You're going to have an impression, an inkling. You're going to have a direction, an inner witness telling you, go this way, do this, see it this way, contact so-and-so, do this and that. Something greater than you ever saw. Now is not the time to draw back into perdition. It's not the time to draw back into the things that were. It's time to, we are those that are propelled into faith. Which faith? This faith. The greater is here. The greater is here. God has answered your prayers of all these years. The one Mina is here. God has added a combined move of the Spirit to your ten. You did not know why God was telling you perfect your ways. You did not know. For example, when we began in the first 40 days, we did not know why God was telling us perfect your ways, get ready, seek God. I told you God is looking for people whom he can trust. God is looking for people. He's, he's going to work with people again. And, and we were praying 
and we were fasting and we were believing God and now you know some time went by and now we are back with the word of the Lord it's just day 7 and day 7 is also a day of completion and the word of the Lord came the word of the Lord still comes the word of the Lord still comes glory to God as it came in the days of the prophets the word of the Lord still comes the word of the Lord came and it is time to rise Deuteronomy 32 13 he made him rise you know Isaiah 40 31 but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles it's time for you to mount up so you're going to take this prayer point in the name of Jesus Holy Spirit whatever is in me that you did not plant remove it glory to God whatever is in me that is contrary to what your message your voice your spirit desires to do remove it from my life you're going to see God take a surgical instrument of his word and cut away he's going to cut up men I feel the anointing like liquid fire like leak, literally, I felt like someone poured on me boiling hot water, like liquid fire. Let's begin to pray. In the name of Jesus, Father, my Father, whatever you did not plant in us, whatever you did not plant in us, whatever you did not plant in this house, whatever you did not plant, oh God, remove it. Remove it, kill it, remove it, remove the tears, uproot the tears in the name of Jesus. You're a God of miracles, signs and wonders. You're a God who declares the end from the beginning. You're the Alpha and the Omega. My Father, whatever you did not put in us, remove the veils, remove the demonic gates, remove the false impressions, remove the fear, remove the confusion, remove the stubbornness, remove being stuck. Father, clear the crooked paths and make them straight in the name of Jesus. Remove the old leaven. Purge out the old leaven from among us in the name of Jesus. Bring life. Bring strength in Jesus' name. Lord, we come to you and we declare that that which is old is going away. Pour out the old wine. Pour out the old oil. Change the wineskin. Change the wineskin, my Father. Remove the old leaven. Remove the old garment. Cast away the old mantle. Remove the old faith, the old mentalities. That which you did not plant in us, Lord, remove it. Remove it. That which men have planted, the enemy has planted. Remove it, my Father, to accommodate the Spirit, to accommodate the move of God, to accommodate the anointing, to accommodate the rise, to accommodate the wings of eagles, to accommodate the spirit of just men made perfect, to accommodate new gates. Lord, we thank you for new gates. We thank you for new paths. We thank you for open nations. We thank you, Lord, our lives and identity in the nations. Your name, our name, our name, my Father, shall be heard in the nations. Our name, our life, our ministry shall be heard in the nations. Our heritage is in the nations. It is in the heavens, in the heavens of the heavens. Father, let our names be called. Kalefora dilemma costelefastis. Le cabron de giste levekizes ambrogaistes. Lord, we call out our names, call out our names, call out your name, call out your name, call out your name in the heavens of the heavens. Let the anointing of the Holy Spirit fall upon you. Let the anointing of the Holy Spirit fall upon you. Le grazica tondes, le brocute rive di kesel gradi, ze vrezike te brongos olofretigistes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let the nations open. That which we did not see possible, now it is being made possible. You've announced and said, Behold, I do a new thing. Shall I not declare it? Father, we thank you. That which you did not plant in us, that which you did not put in us, that which you did not send in us, Lord, remove it and declare your glory. Declare your glory by miracles, signs and wonders. Declare your glory by your Spirit. Declare your glory by the power of your Spirit, by the faith of your Spirit, by the wind of your Spirit. Make us a standing army again in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Clear the path. Clear the terrain. Clear the grounds of our hearts. That which you did not put, O oh God, let it catch fire. Let it catch fire. Let it be burned. Let it be turned out of the way. 
that you may have your way. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O God, my strength and my Redeemer. I thank you, my Father. I thank you for always for hearing me, for accommodating me. Thank you, Father. Thank you for a new move. Thank you for a new day. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I give you praise. I give you praise.